In a world where water hits into the puddle like that, magical pictures show up, and pressing start causes this picture to show up. Greetings everyone, Marky Joe 1990 here back with Olivian Knights. Today we're going to be doing Tale 3, Homecoming, followed by the Red... The, the, uh, the, bah, something. Okay, so we have Lynn, Kent, and Sane, and uh, uh, as always... Sane is flirting with Lady Linda, saying that she is so beautiful. Which she is! I will give that much to Lynn. She's quite hot. Um. But seriously, man. Stop with your flirting. It's been, what, two years? Oh, man! Kent is actually talking. And Lynn is sad. Because she does not want to leave them. Though, honestly, with that horrible brown scarf that Sane has I'd say get the fuck out of there cuz you don't know what that scarf is made out of it's it looks like it's made out of shit do you want a man who has shit on his chest really I'm just not even paying attention to the sex cuz I know it's already going on isn't that lovely <laughs> Lynn is Still the same as she's always been. Boring and bland as all hell. Oh man, the not so happy music. And there's this dude who's like, hello, I have only one eye. Oh yeah, by the way, the Dezute clan is... They want to fuck her shit up. What the hell? The Dezute clan? Why do they have such horrible names? I have no clue, sir. All I know is that they want us dead because they're jealous that we have a better name. We are the Katola clan. Of course we know that our name is more awesome. <laughs> they could be spies, of course, but... I ran out of things to say. Excellent! Yes, excellent. So basically what just happened is they're like, Oh man, these three people might be the Jute spies. We have to make sure they don't fuck our shit up. Wrath is gonna come. Our job is to recruit him with the almighty power of Lin. That is right, Lin has the power of forcing people to come on our side. She also has the power of, um, using the Soul Kadi. Look at that. It's forged the battle wyverns. Thankfully, there are no wyverns in this chapter, so that, that worry is out of my pants. Meanwhile, we have something even worse on our hands, nomadic troopers. I freaking hate nomadic troopers always. Also, if you guys saw my, um, tail one bug, you saw it coming! This guy, who was once that bandit from the first chapter, is now nomadic trooper man! Armed with silver weaponry, which realistically would be weaker than steel and iron weapons, but this is Fire Emblem and logic does not exist here. We all know this by now. Alright, so we're gonna worry about getting Wrath to, 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 to cough up some money and to join our team with the almighty power of Lin. Also, Satan can, can tell. Kent's all distraught because he's, he's fucking hot for Lin. And he would love nothing better than to fuck her brains out. But he understands that she is more in love with the planes than she is with him. Oh yeah, by the way, Birder! Ah, uh, Kent, you're such a nice guy though. All you want is to make Lynn happy. But you know what, to be honest, I think that Lynn would probably be happier with Kent than she would be with the planes. I mean, Kent is such a nice guy and she already acknowledges that Kent, has, Kent and Sane have both done so much for her. So I don't know where, like, I can see where he's coming from when it comes to not not telling Lin about his feelings, but come on, dude. You should totally do it. And now we have prevented Wrath from kicking our asses because we have talked to him. Wrath is, as always, very talkative. And uh, I got nothing else to say here. We're just gonna turn them blue. See? My almighty powers have turned them blue. Except these guys. 
my magical powers malfunctioned and these guys turned green. This guy too. Poor fucker. Oh yeah, this is the guy's description. Also, he's pretty kick-ass. Check out his killing edge and his venom bow. We will not be using his venom bow though. We will be using his magical powers of one-eyedness. Also, this guy. He's not gonna be easy. He's not gonna be difficult either. Also, um, since we have rec recruited Wrath and shit onto our team, get prepared for a really cheap shot! Um, yeah, there's something about this chapter that I really don't like. And you're about to see it. Alright, so he starts to talk shit. And he's like, I shall rule all of Sake because I am a classic Saturday morning cartoon. And then these guys come out, you know. And look! To my left, two nomadic troopers and a warrior. Guess what? When this cutscene ends, they get to attack! So once again, Archibald has had the nerve to make it so that enemies can attack right away after they spawn without giving us the opportunity to anticipate it beforehand. There's not a single hint of this. So this ends up being a cheap shot. It's, gen it's generally the equivalent of the invisible coin block trap in Super Mario World hacks. And that is something I don't like. Oh yeah, by the way, despite the, ge th the fact that these guys are reinforcing on this cutscene too, they will also be hit first. Don't get cocky, guy. I'm using American words because I'm Sakaian. That made no sense. <laughs> and so they march forward into the into their death. What the fuck is wrong with you, warrior? You're fighting a swordmaster, and your hit ratio is zero. What makes you think that guy will show you mercy and not make you scrub the floors of Hyrule? And you! You! With your stupid steel sword, how do you expect to accomplish anything in life? I give you five cuts to the face. I hope you have life insurance. What time is it? Any oh shit! That guy's got a halberd! Oh shit, he is gonna rape some dudes tomorrow. That guy's got a sword though, so he's not quite as awesome. Hopefully he won't be doubling though. Good, good boy. You get an extra biscuit, and for you, you're gonna get killed the next turn because you have an iron bow. I'm going to lick your face with my Uncle Grandpa, which is a show on uh, Cartoon Network that aired some time ago. I never really watched much of it, because it was, it was only one episode. But let's not get off topic, because getting off topic is for drug-induced people. So if you want to be in the, a drug-induced person, expect to do things like die. Like that Cthulhu right there. He just decided to give up on life. Unfortunately, in this kind of society, Cthulhu's are quite suicidal. Oh, look at that. At least they're killing the Dejutes. This is more their battle than anything. Man, I am seeing lots of shit today. Must be because I, I took extra caffeine and injected it into my brain. Just like old Grandma Stuffum wood. Oh look, I have a Monikati. Oh man, floink, do a backflip, and okay, critical, critical, oh, Lynn, you Lynn, you're just gonna do your backflip because I don't give a shit about that. As for you, warrior man, we have to do something about you. Emergency, kill the dude, Kent, die him to grave. Ah! The halberd mists which means we still have hope in life. EXPERIENCE HAS BEEN GOTTEN! Meanwhile, Velmer is gonna killing edge you. Come on, teach your horse how to jump. Do it! No, you didn't teach him how to jump. By, by jumping, I mean critical, by the way. AHA! But we have trapped your dear Dejut pal, Mr. Dejut generic man. Now how will he be able to attack? He's stuck in between these areas, which means that only the true power of Jesus can save him now. Meanwhile, Sane. Sane. He's insane, man. 
gotta love the insaneness. Guy, to, to be honest, something something else I don't like about this chapter, Guy and Dane don't really do much. They're just sort of here, and even if you let them die, it really doesn't matter, because most of the battle's over here, and it's gonna take these nomadic troopers a while to just get over here to attack. So essentially, having them here seems kind of pointless. Especially since we won't be using them ever again, as far as I'm concerned. As, like, I'm not gonna jump to conclusions about that, but... It, I doubt we're gonna be using these guys again. So it seems kinda pointless. Dodge it! Yes. Oh yeah, something else. Um, Dayan no longer sucks. <laughs> In Fire Emblem 6, we all knew he was an absolutely horrible, 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 horrible unit. But in this game, he's got stats that will make you wez your pants. Wez is the new wiz. That Kutola's fucked, by the way. Ah! That Kutolo managed to survive. How much longer can he take? How long till he gives in to peer pressure and dies just like that? I guess it takes that long for a Kutola to accept defeat. Ah! He's attacked. Wait, no. Never mind. He's just attacking a Kutola. Oh, snap! That Kutola is pissed. He doesn't fuck around with nomadic troopers. And by that... I can stand by him, because I fucking hate nomadic troopers. Urgh! I'm a kitty! Ugh! The Eye of the Tiger says, Guy shall be hit by that short bow, because 20 hit percent hit just makes sense. Just watch that, he's gonna get criticaled. I hate that, by the way. Fucking criticals for enemies. I do not like it. Alright, I'm gonna end the thing, the, the video for now, and then I'm gonna move on to my next door neighbor, who is also named Video. Okay, stay tuned!